This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, Agon Erev Shabbos, everyone. Baruch Abam. We have a lot to do today. We have a big, uh, we have a big lineup. We have four short shirim. We're going to start with Perkei Um We're up to Perk Aleph, Mishnah, Hey. As we mentioned from Rav Volba, one of the four things every Jew has to know is the Mishnah Bura, um, Rabbeinu Yoyna, on Perkei Avos, Rashi and Ramban al Torah, and Masil Sisharim. So, this is one of the four sort of basics of uh, Limud, <coughs> one of the four basic things that every Jew should know. So let's uh, learn Mishnah Hey. Yoisi ben Yochanan ish Yushalayim Oimer. Yoisi ben Yochanan from Jerusalem would say. Now, by the way, on the previous Mishnah, um, Rabbeinu Yoni had a very big chiddush because when it says Yoisi ben Yoyezer ish Tzred Yosef ben Yochanan ish Shalayim Kiblu Mehem, the question is who's Mehem? The only person in the previous generation was Antignois ish Soichai. So who's Mayhem? So Rabbi Yonah said, from Antignois and from Shimon Tzadik. That was the Chiddush of Rabbi Yonah. It was pointed out to me over Yom Tif that not everybody reads it that way. Some have a Gersa in the Mishnah, Yosemi Yazir, Shreve Yosemi Yazir, Kiblu Mimenu, only from Antignois. Anyway, Yosemi Ben Yochanan, Ishu Shalayim, Oimer. Your house should be open wide. What does that mean? The you aniyim bnei veisecha. The poor should be members of your household. V'al tar besicha imha ishtai. Do not speak at length with the woman. So now let's say pshat. What does it mean, the woman? It says the Mishnah be ishtai amru. Talking about your wife. Kavachoy mer be ishas chaverai. Or the more so, the wife of your friend. Mikan amru chachamim. From here, the sage is derived. When a person speaks at length with the woman, he causes harm to himself. He loses out from learning. In the end, he will inherit a very hot place. Did I ever mention? Gehenna is not comfortable. So, you don't want to have long conversations with the woman. You cause bad for yourself, you lose that in Torah, and in the end, you inherit Gehenna. You know, it's very interesting. Imagine somebody would say that don't do the following. First of all, they're going to put you in a raging fire. And also, what do you mean and also? I think that's enough, no? I mean, I think everything else should pale in comparison to the Gehenna. The answer is Gehenna is a side note. Gehenna is not the Icar over here. The most important thing in this world is your soul. And if you cause harm to your own soul, that's the biggest problem. And uh, next, after your soul is, if you could have been learning Torah and acquiring Shlemos, and you lose out on that. Gehenna is the least of your problems. Anyway, let's see what Rabbi Yonah has to say. Some say it means sheyimtzu bebeisai harvacha b'nei adam hatzrichim. It doesn't mean your house should be open wide. Revacha, like the revach vehatzala, there should be a certain um, generous givings. In other words, people should have respite in your house. There should be harvacha to people should have pleasantness in your house. In your house, it should be known as a place where you could get a good bite, where you could get a good word. Oy perushay, or another pshat says Rabbi Yaina, shia beisay kebeisa Avram Avino, that your house should be like the house of Abraham. Allah hashalom. Shahayadar baderech bimkaim revacha, that he would live on the road, in an open place, so that wayfarers could be able to stay by him. His house was open on four sides. Wherever side you would come in, there's a door open. Remember when you were a kid, you made the tent of Abraham, he had four doors. 
Meaning, don't be the guy who you have like five bolts on your front door with two watchdogs and then a gate with an armed guard at your front door. So yeah, inside you have good food always available, but for somebody to get in, it's like you know getting into getting into the Kremlin or something. You know, it should be easy access. You know, obviously you got to protect your privacy, and you can't let everybody into your house these days. But Lamaisa, a deserving person, uh, who's uh, he, he should feel like it's easy access. Um, and the first shot is people should have harvacha in your house. In other words, when somebody thinks about your house, their thought should be, you know, that's a place where I could get a good word and something, a good bite. Now, viyu aniyam b'nei The poor should be members of your house. What does this mean? Hu fanim. This could be expounded in two ways. Number one, bimkoim she'koyne avadim umefarnesam. In a situation where you get servants to support. In other words, you're a wealthy guy, you need a driver, you need, a, you need somebody to, you need a secretary, you need people to work for you. So make sure you give the jobs to people who are poor so that you could support them. And you won't have to spend your money on buying, meaning, in other words, if you need to give out a job, give it to somebody who needs the money. Number two, The poor should be welcome in your house. They shouldn't think, oh, how am I going to, what should I say to this Oisher today? I'm going to have to really compliment him. It should be easy for them to get in without busha. Make the Aniyim feel welcome. Give them a smile so that they shouldn't be embarrassed to come. They should feel good. Yeah, they should have permission. They could sit down at your table. They could go to your water machine. They could open up your fridge and take a cup. They don't have to, they don't feel like you're standing on eggshells. Um... The same way your kid runs down and he raids the fridge and he doesn't say, can I take the last piece of chicken? When you come home, be ready that the last piece of chicken that you wanted, one of your kids ate already. You know how it goes. You know, you bought a good treat and you open up the fridge, it's gone. Who ate it? Your kid ate the whole thing. And he's not embarrassed, you know. So the Oni should feel like your house is his house. Because conversing with women brings to improper thoughts, sin and betel taira. Now what does this mean? As I once heard from Chashev Arav, if there's anyone who you should speak to at length, who needs it, it's your wife. She deserves your attention. But at the same time, the Mishnah is saying to be somewhat circumspect. And if you don't like how that sounds, take it up with the uh, redactors of the Oral Law and with the Rebbe Hashem himself. But there, there is some type of balance that is um, being said that a person should be careful even in conversation with his own wife. Now, the Rabbi Yonah quotes Rashi, Ki ba'avos de Rabbi Nassan oimer, in Avos Rav Nassan we find Now this is very interesting because what do you mean Kosav Rashi? As uh, many know, Rashi did not write a commentary on Perkei Avos. The Rashi on Avos, the Chida says, is not Rashi. So I guess Rabbeinu Yoyinu would have to mean the commentary that purports to be Rashi, but that means it's quite an early commentary. If Rabbeinu Yoyinu is quoting Rashi, so I guess we have to look into this. Because the Chida famously says in his entry on Rashi, that Rashi on Perkei Yavis, Rashi on Medrash Rabbah, Rashi on Divrei Hayamim is not from Rashi. But uh, I saw recently in Reb Schwab, when we were learning Reb Schwab on Tefillah, he quotes Rashi on, on Divrei Yavim, and he says, even though Rashi on Divrei Yavim is not Rashi, me based Midrashi shall Rashi Yatsa. I guess that means it's from Talmide Rashi, the ideas of Rashi, even of Rashi. So maybe the same thing with Perkei Avais. 
Anyway, Rashi quotes Abbas Ram Nasan that it's talking about when one's wife is a Nida. Beishtai Nida Amro. Kav Choymer Beishtai's Chaver of Ratzalaymer Shaloi Laharbois Dvarim Beishtai Nida Shemayigbar Hayid Serviyavi De Pshia. Don't get involved in excessive chatter with one's wife who's a Nida. You might come to flagrant sin. Kav Choymer Beishtai's Chaveroi Sheyitzray Takva Yelabi Yosef. Certainly your friend's wife. Why? She'im bezois. Because if your own wife, muteras, that tomorrow shall be permitted, it's like you have bread in your basket because you know that you'll be able, she'll be mutter eventually. Amru, they said, be circumspect in your conversation. Certainly the wife of a Gentile. This is a very important idea. Don't make a mistake and think, oh, the neighbor's wife is much more attractive. No, not at all. It's just usher. And because it's usher, therefore it becomes sweet. Rav Miller would say, Mayim genuvim yimtaku. Think about it. Water has no taste. Water has zero taste. So how could it, you say yimtaku? The answer is the fact that it's stolen, it adds flavor. So a person should recognize that objectively your own wife is much more beautiful, is much more attractive. It's just that the Yetzirah tries to persuade you because the other, the grass on the other side is not yours, that conjures up this false allure. But that's Mayim Genu Mutanga. V'nir lefarsha kapshutai. Says Rabbeinu Yaina, Actually, in his opinion, there is an idea, don't talk too much even to your own wife. Don't have these uh, excessive conversations. So that you don't frequent her every day. In other words, this is uh, to um, curtail excessive indulgence even with one's own wife. One's own wife. A person should not live with their wife for just pleasure. Ach mitzvah. Just in order to fulfill the mitzvah and the responsibility to one's wife. There has to be a difference between man and animal. So Rabbeinu Yon is saying an interesting thing. It's not that the excessive conversation, and maybe he'll get to, can lead to Lashon Hara, it could lead to Kina, that's not, that might be true, that's not the point. The point is, since a person should um, utilize a degree of, of, um, of moderation when in their relationship with their wife, excessive conversation may lead one to go beyond the threshold of moderation. And v'hu midas haprishus u'meviyasay lamadregas halyonas kedamrina haprishus mevila deitahara. So this is the Mishnas Chasidim that Rabbi Rabbi Yonah is saying that excessive conversation may lead somebody to be with their wife above and beyond what's needed to keep a person. A, separa, a, a person checked from the Yetzirah. But Rabbi Yonah continues, What does it mean if you speak excessively with a woman, you cause evil to yourself? It fuels the Yetzirah. The Yetzirah is called bad. You know what it means? You know what it means? Ra means you bring the Yetzirah. Basically, the Yetzirah was sleeping, he was dormant, he wasn't excited, and because of this excessive conversation, it woke up the Yetzirah. The Yetzirah is very difficult. Even his creator called him bad. Now don't blame this on anyone else. You brought it on yourself. You invited the Yetzirah. You said, Rabbi Yetzirah, please, wake up. Get going. It's like, you know, it's the sleeping dog. 
And like in the cartoons, you know, the guy, he, op- he lifts up the ear of the sleeping dog and he screams in the ear of the sleeping dog. What do you expect? So you have this excessive conversation. Yeah? How, what do you think of the Shava Brachas? Yeah? Did you, did you like the way they folded the napkin? Did you like the... What do you care how they folded the napkin? Why are you talking about how they folded the napkin? Do you think she cooked the food or she got it catered? Well, who cares? What difference does it make? You, if you liked it, you liked it. You didn't like it, you didn't like it. Well, where, where's this conversation going? Nothing good is happening from this. The, and you brought it on yourself. Okay. Hifriz. Al hamidois yoiser mishar bnei adam. She pa'amim yetzaram is gaber aleim. You are actually more excessive than other people. Other people, yeah, the yetzar sometimes prevails over them. Avo beloy she yasim davar goyrim. That's not. Uh, that's in a situation where they didn't necessarily cause the yetzar. Avo loy migramas anzi pasuk aleim ara. Meaning everybody else in the world, there are times the yetzar just you know. Blows them over, but they did, they weren't the one who brought the yitzar on themselves. Number two, uboytu mi devei tayra ki machshavas hatayra loitikain neged enov baoid libay poyne elo isha vielsi chasam thought in tayra will not be possible before your eyes. When you are focused on a woman and the and her and conversation with her, now I think this is a chiddush nifla. I would have said, you know, why you shouldn't have a lengthy conversation with a woman, because you could have been learning a black gemara. Then you could have been l- learning from your sefer. No, Rabbi Yon is not talking about that. Rabbi Yon is talking about what is the status quo mindset of the mind of a person. In other words, where should a, ma- a person's mind be focused? One's mind should be focused on machsheves hatayra. And if you're conversing with a woman, then your mind cannot be in that status quo of thinking entire It sounds like, if I'm talking to a, a, my friend, how are you? What's doing? That's not such an engaging conversation. It's not getting your... Not, it's not flaring up your juices that you can't be thinking Machshavah Satar at the same time. Rabbi Yon is saying that when a person is conversing with a woman, the, the, the way that type of conversation takes the mind in, it completely diverts you away from the focus on Limad Atayra. In other words, Rabbi Yeager pointed out, other Rishayinim learned that Stam, if you have a conversation with somebody, it's wasting time. I think Rabbi Yoyna is making a different point of this. The point is that there's a certain frame of mind where a person, even if they're not like actively thinking, what's Torah, their mindset is, they're churning Devrei Torah, and, and as soon as you start conversing with a woman, the way the human psyche is, is that it diverts you away from that type of thought. Anyway, Rabbi Nuyana says further, Vesoifo Yerish Gehenim, Shesoif Boli De Avera. In the end, you're going to come to sin. Achar Asher Beshrius Liba Hoylech Medarid Varmima. Because now you're just following the whims of your heart and you're speaking with her. Akaponim Yasa Ched Viocha, you're going to sin. Vizel Shamar Shlomi Amel Chalva Shalom, Umoitza Ani Mar Mimaves Esho Isha. I find more bitter than death the woman Asher Himitsoidim, which is a trap. The Haramim Liba, her heart is a snare. Asurum Yadar, her hands are tied. Toid Lefneho like him, Yimalate Mimena. Someone who's good before God will be spared from her. Vachoite Yilachedba. And a sinner will be trapped by her. Marvra Aboisai, I don't understand. I have a question. Is this person violating Yichud or is this person not violating Yichud? Is he speaking with the woman behind the closed door or not? If the door is closed, let Rabbeinu Yoyna say, He's violating Yichud! So of course he's going to sin. The answer, Rabbi Yisai, is obviously, the guy is conversing with the lady on the street, or even worse, at the Kiddush, in a shul, where they don't, where they don't have the right guideline, 
where it's men and women standing together, conversing. And that conversation, even though there are other men around, that conversation, Rabbi Yoyno says, will lead to sin. That will be the end of it. And therefore, always try to do people a favor that when you make a simcha, you want it to be a simcha shal kedusha. You want it to be a joyous occasion. You don't want there to be any negative outcome from that. So, when you keep men on one side and women on the other side, you're, you're not only doing a favor to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, you're helping out all of the people participating in the simcha, that they will be spared from any difficult situation. Very interesting. Death only takes you out from this small world. A woman could destroy the soul forever. I didn't, I, I didn't realize this. More bitter than death. How could something be more bitter than death? The answer is death is not, the, it's, it's not a great thing, but it only takes you out of this small world. But that is something more bitter than death could be Esho Isha. Asher hi mitsoidim. Ha'adam, it's a trap for a person. Kivan shemabit bi Isha. By looking at the woman, nilkad hu barishta, you fall in her trap. Asher hi mitsoida, vlo yuchal hi male mimena. So you say, ah, oh, but I'm bigger than that. It would never happen to me. It would only happen to somebody on a very low madrega. Pal, it's happened to people a lot greater than you. It's happened to tzaddikim much more righteous than you. It's happened to much more pious people than you. Okay? So if they were in danger, it's happened to people at Ruach HaKodesh. So here's the deal. Just realize that on the totem pole of who it could happen to, you're on the bottom of the list. If you're in, living today in 2022... Out of a hundred, out of you know the totem pole of the Jewish people of history, we're the most likely, we're the most in danger. So we have to take the most precautions. Don't say, oh, 50 years ago, a hundred years ago, they were able to live normally and nothing happened. Yeah, because uh, they were much healthier than we are. In our times, no precaution is excessive. Anyway, um, a person looks at what they want, and they forget what's going to happen in the end. Like the python said, The foolish dove goes in the desert, he sees the food, he doesn't see the trap. Okay? So that's how you have to think of it. You see somebody who you think could be enticing, what you should think is, I see a trap. I see a net. I see a trap. That's what you see. Don't think, oh, I see the food. No, you have to see the net. liba. And trap is her heart. When she desires man in her heart, you should know. Stay away. Even if you don't want her. If she wants you, you're dead meat. So you don't even want to be within the purview that your bad mazel is that the other person should want you. Asurim <laughs> her hands are a prison. Shem achazatu v'yadeha if she grabs a hold, then you're in jail. So if you think, I don't know, should I go? There's no mechitza over there. I don't know. I don't want to insult anyone, but it's too, it's a very big temptation. Do yourself a favor. Say, oh, I feel so bad. I couldn't make it. I wasn't feeling well. Please forgive me. Write them a big check and do yourself a favor. But that's um, where Rabbi Yonis says, "Shat Sadikim, Akos Baruch Hu Shoyimram ve'Inam Ezamnam b'Shum Davar Sheyuchul Kashabai." God guards the tzaddikim. You know what? A person has to daven. Rebbeinu Shalom, save me from the Yetzer Hara, because without your help, 
it's it's daunting. Don't be a fool. Don't play with fire. Don't say, nah, it's not, it's only Yichud Rabbanon. Get out of there like it's a fire. So, you know who's going to be Nikshal? Someone who doesn't take it seriously. Someone who's not concerned. Someone who says, nah, I'm past that already. Okay, Rabbi Isai, uh, here's the next, next offering. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.